Hello everyone and welcome to the first session of our course. In this introductory session, we will introduce ourselves, then talk about the representations of the self and identity issues in our specific fields. Marie Noel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Catalina. Hello, my name is Marie Noel Beauvieux. I am a French comparative literature specialist. I am working on Western and Japanese literature, and I teach French literature at Hiroshima University. I wrote my PhD on fragmentary writing in Akutagawa's works, and my main research interests are Japanese short stories and aphorism at the beginning of the 20th century and their relationship with Western literature. In this course about representation of the self in Japanese literature and popular culture, I will talk about Taisho period literature and how autobiographical writing became popular through an autobiographical genre called I novel, or in Japanese, Shishosetsu. Taisho period began in 1912 and ended in 1926. Before, during the Meiji period, Japanese written language became closer to oral language thanks to the Genbun Ichi movement. As for literature, novels, or shōsetsu, became a popular form thanks to this new written language and to the seminal essay written by Tsubouchi Shōyo, The Essence of the Novel, that was published between 1885 and 1886. Tsubouchi emphasizes the importance of psychological characterization. I quote, a novelist is like a psychologist. His characters must be psychologically convincing. Should he contrive to create by his own invention characters at odds with human nature, or worse, with the principle of psychology, those characters would be figments of his imagination rather than human beings, and not even a skillful plot or a curious story could turn what he wrote into a novel." End of quote. Not so long after, French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau's Confessions, a milestone of autobiographical writing, was translated for the first time in Japanese. In his work, Rousseau is linking confessional writing to the research of the human nature and is stressing the importance of showing his flaws without hiding anything. Two decades later are published two works that were originally written as naturalist literature, but they became retrospectively treated as the first eye novels. The Broken Commandment by Shimazaki Toson was published in 1906, and The Quilt by Tayama Katai was published in 1907. Actually, Toson's novel, though some parts are inspired by the author's life, is not autobiographical at all. However, it was later praised as the pioneer of the I novel because the main interest of the plot is the psychology of the character. This character is belonging to the outcast, but he is living as a normal human and he ends up his internal conflict by confession. As for Katai's novel, it was received as the first attempt to present one's ugliness, and it made a profound impression on the literature world at the time. At the end of the decade, literature became increasingly focused on how to write human nature and human psychology. One of the answers was by writing oneself, as it is the most accessible subject for precise scientific observation, to quote the eye novel specialist Ermela Kishnerheit. This literary trend came at a time when the literary world was rapidly changing. 
From 1910, the writers progressively stopped using artistic pen names or gago and replaced them with their own real names. There was a boom in the publishing world and authors were asked to write pieces and essays for newspapers and magazines. Authors started to be able to make a living through writing while they were becoming public figures. This particular configuration has probably helped increase the demand for autobiographical material in writing. Among the most famous Ai novelists, there is Shiga Naoya. He was from a wealthy family, as were all the most important writers from Shirakabaha, the White Birch School, the group he belonged to. He became one of the most popular writers of the Taishu period and was even called the god of prose writing. He notably wrote about the troubles he had with his father in two novels, Wakai, The Reconciliation, published in 1917, and Ayakoro, A Dark Night's Passing, published between 1921 and 1937. But I novel was also a genre practiced by minor writers from modest backgrounds like Chikamatsu Shuko or Kasai Denzo. One of the I novel narrative motifs is actually the depiction of financial hardship. Even one of the most famous figures of Taisho literature, Akutagawa Ryunosuke, though he was very critical of the Ai novel discourse has published works based on his own life. That's why he has been read by several critics as an Ai novel writer. Here, we can distinguish two different visions of the literature of the self. In French and European tradition, the writing of true human psychology is not linked to autobiographical material. Though Aristoteles' literary theory put a strong emphasis on mimesis, the imitation of nature is not inconsistent with fiction. On the other hand, autobiography do need an affirmation of one's own identity. Philippe Lejeune, a researcher on French autobiography stresses that the use of the author's name in the work is a non-negotiable feature of the autobiography. The author can directly use his name in the work or suggest the identity between the I and the author's name through a clear title which categorizes the work as an autobiography. For example, memoirs or my life. The author is responsible for creating a pact of sincerity with the reader and for declaring the autobiographical nature of his work. In Japanese eye novel tradition, the eye novel nature of a work relies first on the reader. He is the one who decides to read the novel through the lens of what he knows of the author's life. Actually, I novels are frequently third person's narratives and they can also refer to the protagonist with a fictitious name. The psychological truth of the novel is not to be found in a faithful recollection of facts, but in a faithful account of the feelings and thoughts of the author. This kind of literary reception led a good part of Japanese literary world to define the eye novel as truly sincere and purely Japanese, while the foreign novels, though they were the models of the Japanese naturalist movement and as such were called true novels, were categorized as fabrication and purely Western. The eye novel is still today a broad basic current running through modern literature in Japan, 
to quote Kirchnerheit again, as it is not or not only a literary genre, but as I have mentioned, a mode of reading. The American researcher Howard Hibbert was still writing in 1977 the narrowly personal eye novel, Shishosetsu, is still the most tenacious form of con contemporary Japanese fiction. On a more recent note, the Japanese novelist Mizumura Minae, who was raised in America, reactivated the old Taisho antagonism between the Japanese eye novel and the Western true novel, authentic novel, through the title of two of her works, an eye novel from left to right, written in 1995, and a true novel published in 2002. In the first session, I will cover the context of the birth of the eye novel and the theoretical question discussed during the 1920s. We will read excerpts of Tayama Katai, Chikamatsu Shuzo, and Dazai Osamu to see to what extent these theoretical points got embodied in the style of these writers. In the second session, we will question our novel discourse through Akutagawa Ryunosuke's works. After reviewing what were his critics towards the eye novel, we will read excerpts from his autobiographical works to point out how his style reflects his conception of writing the self. Thank you. Kathleen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marie Noel, and hello again, everyone. Please allow me to introduce myself in a little more detail. So my name is Katalin Dalmi, and I am an assistant professor here at Hiroshima University. I teach contemporary Japanese literature at the Graduate School of Humanities and Social Sciences. I am originally from Hungary, where I studied Japanese language and culture before starting my PhD here at Hiroshima University. I became familiar with Japanese literature during my first years of university. I can't recall the first Japanese novel I've ever had, but I still clearly remember the one that made the biggest impact on me during those years. That was The Wild Sheep Chase, or Hitsuji Omeguru Boken in Japanese, from Murakami Haruki. I found it entertaining and easy to read, while there were also some references to Japanese history that made me think further. Also, the unexpected plot twists and fascinating characters captivated my fantasy. That's why I decided to get to know Murakami's fiction better. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on magical realism in Murakami Haruki's fiction, which is still the main focus of my research. However, recently I became interested in contemporary female writers, such as Murata Sayaka, and their use of the fantastic. So if we talk about the representation of the self and identity issues in modern Japanese literature, we can't avoid mentioning Murakami Haruki. The changing notions of the Japanese identity have been a central theme of modern Japanese literature since the late 19th century when Japan opened up its borders. Japanese writers have repeatedly addressed the issue in their fiction, and Murakami Haruki is no exception. To understand Murakami's position in modern contemporary Japanese literature, let me talk a little bit about the post-war Japanese literary landscape first. So post-war Japanese writers such as Noma Hiroshi or Ooka Shohei are well known for writing about important social and political issues based on their wartime experiences. At the same time, they also actively participated in political and social debates. For instance, let's take Mishima Yukio, who formed the Tate no Kai 
in order to restore the sacredness and dignity of the emperor and committed ritual suicide after a failed coup d'etat in 1970. Then there was the third generation of post-war writers or Daisan no Shinjin, such as Yasuoka Shotaro or Yoshiyuki Junnosuke, who returned to the I novel tradition and focused on exploring the human nature in everyday life in post-war Japan. So while these authors have all experienced the war and the poverty that followed it, Murakami was born in 1949, four years after the Second World War, and grew up in an era of rapid academic growth. He was a teenager during the 60s and a student at Waseda University when the student movement, the so-called Zenkyoto Undo, peaked. While Murakami himself did not participate actively in the movement, many scholars argue that the failure of the student movement and the political vacuum that followed it caused an identity crisis in Murakami's generation, which appeared in Murakami's early writings as well. In contrast to socially critical and politically activated literature, that dominated the literary scene until the 70s, the characters in Murakami's early fiction are hardly concerned with any social or political issues. Instead, they spend their time in bars drinking beer, such as the narrator in Hear the Wind Sing, Kaze no Uta o Kike, Murakami Haruki's debut work. The passivity of Murakami's characters led several critics and prestigious members of the Japanese literary circles, Bundan, to criticize Murakami for his lack of social and political commitment. Others, such as Matthew Strecker in Dances with the Sheep, the quest for identity in the fiction of Murakami Haruki, argued that the passivity and self-centeredness of Murakami's early heroes represent the disillusionment and disaffection of Murakami's generation. They grew up in an era when political ideologies were replaced with mere consumerism and affluence. Therefore, these young heroes struggled to find meaningful means of self-expression. In that sense, as Strecker argued, Murakami's writings are political. They convey the struggle of young Japanese to define themselves in modern society. Beginning with The Wild Sheep Chase, a novel from 1982, Murakami started to use fantastic elements to explore identity issues in his fiction. In The Wild Sheep Chase, the first person narrator and protagonist, Boku, travels to Hokkaido to find his lost friend and a mysterious sheep that controls Japanese society. He arrives late, but during the adventure, he learns about the forgotten past of Hokkaido and realizes that individuals cannot escape from the omnipresent system the sheep represents. The conflict between the fragile individual and the oppressive system, which later became a central theme in Murakami's fiction, has been already present in this novel. In 1986, Murakami left Japan and spent the following eight, nine years in Europe and the United States. During those years, he faced another critical question. Who is he as a Japanese individual? As a result, Murakami's attention turned to Japanese history. In the Wind of Bird Chronicle, or Nejimakidori Chronicle in Japanese, a novel he wrote during his stay in the United States, he dedicated long chapters to wartime events in Manjuria. While the historical moments Murakami describes in this novel are partly fictional, his attempt to connect his hero with the historical past of Japan is remarkable. It suggests that in order to find our place in contemporary society as an individual, 
we must reconnect with the collective memory of the past. After the great Hanshin earthquake and Tokyo subway sarin attack in 1995, Murakami returned to Japan and began to address current social issues more explicitly. For instance, he held public readings in the earthquake-ridden Kobe region. He also conducted interviews with the victims and former members of the Om Shinrikyo, the religious cult responsible for the sarin attack. Murakami himself called this change in his attitude as shifting from detachment to commitment. However, it doesn't mean that Murakami became a politically activated novelist like the writers of the post-war generation or, for instance, Oweken Zaburo. In Underground 2, a nonfiction about the Tokyo subway sarin attack, Murakami wrote that Jap Japanese society failed to provide alternative value systems for those who couldn't associate themselves with the mainstream ideology, making them vulnerable to harmful narratives. Therefore, those who struggle to establish their own personal value system, or monogatari, tend to seek ready-made ones, which provide them with a comfortable solution. According to Murakami, Asahara Shoko, the founder of Om Shinrikyo, could offer a powerful monogatari to its members, releasing them from the burden of seeking their own personal ones. In return, however, the followers had to offer Asahara their ego or, in other words, their identity. And this, as Murakami says, can lead to catastrophic events such as the Tokyo subway sarin attack. So instead of explicit political and social resistance, Murakami emphasizes the good power of the monogatari or narrative. As Nihei Chikako pointed out in her book, Haruki Murakami, Storytelling and Productive Distance, as a fiction writer, Murakami encourages the readers to observe themselves and society from multiple perspectives by crossing through monogatari first. He believes that this can help readers to establish autonomy and prevent them from being exploited by what he calls the system, a power structure that capitalizes on individuals. The idea of oppressive systems and fragile individuals took form on a fictional level in, for instance, Kafka on the Shore, Umibeno Kafka. In this novel, the 15-year-old Tamura Kafka fights against his father's prophecy to become the world's strongest 15-year-old boy. So in this case, the system is represented by Kafka's father, while the harmful narrative is the quasi-oidipal prophecy he repeatedly tells his son. As we can see in, for instance, Kafka on the Shore, Murakami often employs symbolic images and riddles in his fiction. However, he seldom explains the meaning of those images and often refuses to offer a conclusion in the end. So instead, he encourages his readers to rearrange the narrative, the monogatari, and find the best fitting solution according to their own specific needs. As Nihei Chikako argued, Murakami's reliance on the power of monogatari largely contributed to his international success. By allowing the readers to find their monogatari within the stories, Murakami provides his readers with the chance to reflect on their own situation from a different perspective. The existential problems Murakami portrays in his fiction are shared in many modern societies, making Murakami's fiction relatable for readers, regardless of their age or nationality. Thank you.